Hi guys, and welcome to Simple Spirituality Page. Now, for those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Regine. I am an intuitive, manifesting-based tarot reader. I am a certified Reiki healer and an overall light worker. And before we dive into today's video, which is an unboxing of the, you guessed it, <clears throat> the Prism Tarot by Liz Landis, I would like to invite everyone who would like to receive notifications of my new videos to please hit the subscribe button below. If you like this video later on, please give it your thumbs up. If you have any comments or suggestions you want to say hey, just comment down below. And if you would like your very own tarot reading or Reiki healing session with me online for now, of course, we'll hear the details. Alrighty, so let's get started. These flowers are actually covering the base of my stand and I thought it would just be a cute little touch so that you don't see the base, although they keep moving. But anyways, I digress. So I waited for this deck for quite some time, but I was so happy that it actually came ahead of time. And that's only because here in the Philippines, we went into a second lockdown and so it really delayed everything. <clears throat> but it finally arrived yesterday and I was so happy. And when I opened the package, there was a dice, a triangular dice, which I love, which is, I think, a freebie. Thank you so much to Liz Landis for this, for sending a freebie. As well as a set of lovely stickers. I assume these are stickers. I have not opened them yet, but they look beautiful. And I love that it is still with, with the theme of the Prism Tarot but it still has its own, like it can be a standalone. If, if I didn't have this, I could still purchase this as well as a standalone and be totally thrilled with it. So thank you so much to Liz Landis for this, for sending these freebies out along with the deck. I bought it from her Etsy shop, actually. Now, this thing is beautiful. I mean, this is a work of art. I love minimalist kinds of designs. I love white backgrounds with accent colors or like beige with accent colors. So this is totally up my alley. And let me just note that I actually purchased this deck um, from the section where it said, I think like there is a certain percent off shave from it because there are defects, quote unquote, like for example, the box right here is not perfect, but really, all, if, you're, <clears throat> if you're a tarot reader who uses their deck a lot, you'll probably drop it once, <laughs> once or twice at least in its, in its entirety. And so this doesn't bother me at all. It looks perfectly fine, even, even, even this one. This is something that would probably happen to me after I've um, uh, dropped my deck, right? So, shout out to Liz for this. This is very, I mean, it's almost negligible, to be honest. So it's perfectly fine. And yeah, so that really impressed me. And this, I really appreciate this because it's, a, it's in the shape, in the form of a keyhole. And it really does feel like it's unlocking. Uh, a new world inside and then here at the back as you can see there's a little description the cosmic prism absorbs infinite light through 22 facets so I adore light I am a light worker I adore colors because I work I do Reiki I'm a Reiki I am a certified Reiki healer and I work with chakras and colors are very significant for me and they're very interesting for me okay so without further ado let's actually open it as you can see, it's magnetic and it's very heavy. It's very luxurious. And it does have, um, I think, is this a control number? I'm not sure, but it seems like a control number. Yes, so I, I appreciate that. And this is the booklet that comes with it. Beautiful. And this is my first time opening the booklet. So let's just look at the companion guide. This deck was brought to life by three years of love. Oh, that's beautiful. This is what we call tithing too when you um, say thank you. So it has like an introduction, 
I like that it uses up all of the space because most um, most books actually, not just companion guides, most books actually have like a border around and I like that the border is wide making use of all of the, um, what do you call this, all of the space that's provided on the page. Oh, and it goes straight into, there's an anatomy, there's a card anatomy, so you have your sign, your planets, your elements, and your sigil. So that's good. I mean, it's a very multi-purpose kind of deck. If you are into sigils, which I actually do sometimes, I, I do um, use sigils when it comes to enhancing, excuse me. Um, in Reiki, we use uh, symbols as well, which can be, um, it has the same concept as a, sim as a sigil. Elements, science planet, if you are an astrologer, this is one deck that would probably be perfect for you. Oh, there's numerology as well, perfect. Uh, th there we go, the chakra colors, yeah. Minor arcana, royal court. I like that there is a very concise message, a description about the, um, what do you call this? Uh, what is it called, sorry? About the elements. There we go. And you have like your suits and I'm guessing, yes. Oh, this is very interesting as well. There are, um, there are astrology signs attached to them, which I don't normally have in my, uh, in, in my deck. I, my good friend who owns All Manila is an astrologer. I have reading tips. Very comprehensive book. Um, three card spreads. Again, so yes, very comprehensive. Beautiful and um, jam-packed with information. And so as I was saying, my friend who owns All Manila is an astrologer. If you actually want an astrology reading from her, you can contact her, you can message her. But I, I think that she's going to appreciate this deck a lot too. So this is an astral calendar that comes with it. Um, I have yet to find out how to use the astral calendar because like I said, astrology isn't really my realm. Um, yeah, so that's what it looks like. There's a spread, which I like. This is a little bit of extra. I don't have any other deck that has this. Let's put that aside. And seven minutes into the video, we are now finally getting into the cards themselves. Oop. They are in there. They've traveled quite a long way. There we go. Oh, this is beautiful. I like this. It reminds me of Lisa Frank, but make it adult. So there's the box, and as you can see, I have not yet opened it. So there is a plastic covering that, that protects all of the cards, and let us just open this. Uh, how do I open it now? Okay, let me get a pair of scissors and do it properly. Just a small snippet, there we go. That's all we need. Let me just tell you guys that this deck is very, it feels very luxurious. The box itself is heavy. The card deck itself is, it's not that heavy, but it feels very substantial. So I like decks like that because it makes you want to use them. The, the feel itself makes you want to use them. So there are decks that are too light, which I don't actually enjoy shuffling and because of that, I don't use them as often. Okay, so let's put these guys here. Set it aside. And without further ado, here is the present tarot for you guys. Let's go through a flip through. So this is the back. This is what the back looks like. The border is glossy, but the entire card is matte, which I adore. I love matte cards. Let's do it like this so we don't um, mess with the, with the entire thing. Okay. 
These cards are beautiful. If you are very much a visual person, you will appreciate these cards so much. I like that there is a distinction between the <clears throat> between the two. Um, what do you call this? The the two cats because most of the time they're just lions, right? And lions are male. But this cat, I'm not sure what cat it is, if it's a puma, or I have to look at it. But this cat makes me think that it's female. And also your protagonist is a female, which is beautiful. Oh, this is nice. These guys are beautiful, yo. Thank you so much to Liz Landis for making this deck of cards. These are beyond words beautiful. I must say though that this does require prior knowledge of a Rider Waite deck, of a traditional Rider Waite deck, because it seems to be based off of a Rider Waite, like this might be the sun. <clears throat> you have judgment here. And if you are not too familiar with your ma minor, major and minor arcanas of the of uh, wands, okay, uh, of the of the Rider Waite tarot deck, then you might find that you might be reaching for this quite often. So it's an easy fix. Just familiarize yourself with the Rider Waite deck and you'll know right away which card is which because it doesn't have, most cards have, um, what do you call this? Uh, the, the name written, oh this is beautiful. The name written on the bottom. I love this. This is beautiful. This is gorgeous. Eight of Wands. Yes, it needs a second look because Eight of Wands, a lot of people think that it's all about adversity, but really that's not, I mean, first of all, it's dependent on, the message is dependent on what your question is and where you want to go, you know? Like, what do you want to manifest? And what is your outlook? What are your beliefs according to it? I like that every person is also kind of like gem, gem-like, like they, they are gems. Because every person is fragile. Every human being is fragile. <clears throat> Cups. And as you can see, there's a stark difference between the color combinations of this and this. Because, well, that's just the way it is because of the chakras. <laughs> when you get to your cups, your cups are usually all about emotions. These are pretty. This is pretty cups are usually about emotions and that's why you have cancer. Is this cancer? Please don't come at me if it's not cancer, but that's the first thing that I saw. But yeah, so this is beautiful. This is a beautiful depiction. I like well mostly because I like that there's an emphasis of there are two more cups. Usually when you see a five of cups, um, the emphasis is on here. But the first thing I saw was here on the, um, on the fact that they're on a separate level, on a separate plane, and they're there for you to really notice. And you might hear people talking because people are, some people are in my driveway. That's fine. So anyway, when it comes to the cups, it's usually all about your emotions and 
um, you know, what you're feeling, uh, what you're communicating, the energy, the actual stuff of energy. That's why you'll see mostly blues and um, blue is the chakra, the, the color of the third chakra, which is this responsible for expression, self-expression, your, um, of course, expressing to other people, communication, uh, your life's purpose, and then you have your green, which is the heart chakra. Sometimes the heart chakra is also conveyed as red or pink, but mostly it's green as well. Uh, traditionally, it's green. And it's all about loving. You have your purple, um, well, violet, which is your, um, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, which is your third eye chakra, responsible for transmutation and going, looking beyond the surface and your intuition. Yellow is your solar plexus, which is the seat of willpower, your strength, your decision-making process, your alignment from your heart, your mind, to your soul. I like that these colors have been really thought through. <clears throat> Sorry, I keep clearing my throat because the electric fan is blasting on me because of the heat. Now we have the swords. This is a beautiful depiction of the swords. I love that there's just a line that cuts across the entire card. <laughs> this reminds me of Sailor Moon, but it is pretty. I like that it's not so, um, usually when you see Three of Swords, it's very sad. The depiction is very sad, but look at the way the heart is colored. I mean, again, it all depends on, the elements that you see in a card are dependent on the question, where the clearant wants to go, you know, what kind of answers they're looking for, their beliefs, etc. Everything. It's dependent on a case-to-case -case basis. And so I love that there is so much here, so much detail to go about on, and so many messages to be possibly conveyed to you. <laughs> I love this. I love that the, the person is even below the frame, making that opinion or whatever that is you're fighting against more insignificant. Really, I'm just a sucker for symbolism, guys. <laughs> but yes, symbolism is one of the ways in which I discovered that my intuition was very much wide awake and that I am claircognizant. So sometimes it's symbolism, but really it was, in my case, it was already my intuition talking to me and my claircognizance waking up. This is beautiful. Again, your nine of swords sometimes are also depicted as um, very sad cards. Let's look at the ten of swords. So this one isn't too sad, although there's like harakiri going on. Harakiri is um, um, suicide. It's a phenomenon of suicide. It's a word for suicide, uh, not phenomenon. It's a word for suicide in Japanese. But it's still done very elegantly, so not in a grotesque kind of way. And actually, the Ten of Swords is a very grotesque card on, on, in the regular Rider Waite deck. Okay, so it looks like all of the, the, the royals are like this. The king, this is beautiful. And you have your pentacles. This is a very interesting color because um, pentacles are usually for money, but for me, I also, a lot of times when clients come to me uh, and pentacles come out, they're not just limited to money. They're also limited. I see that they go, um, they span across uh, things that are, how do I say this? Things that are important, whether they're tangible or not. Like things you want to attain, whether they're tangible or not. I should probably do a, my common, most common interpretations video. I'll do that later today. 
okay so these are these are great look at all the work that you're putting in it's manual labor oh this is nice i like this oh this is very reverent i love this this is beautiful and look at the heart center just shining out and be, being very um sincere <laughs> this is beautiful traditionally these are sunflowers in the Rider Waite deck and I love that they've become flowers here as well and here <laughs> these are this is cute resonates with me because I live in a tropical island well not island I live in a tropical archipelago beautiful so yeah all of the royals seem to be have they seem to have the same pose and your king and there is there seems to be two extra cards this is beautiful it seems like there's a void but there's also possibilities coming from the void because every decision opens up a possibility and closes not really closes but limits another one so it makes sense this is just beautiful i mean even by itself i could just use it as a card for reading and that's it that is the entire flip through this is wow this is an amazing deck i can see myself using this for the next month at the very least <laughs> for my daily posts on Instagram for my free daily uh, tarot readings on Instagram. This is a beautiful deck, what can I say? And I love the feel of it. Okay, so the pros are, I love the feel of it. The the shuffling feel seems like it's going, it feels like it's going to shuffle well, basically. Um, magician is beautiful. Priestess, this is me. This is the high priestess, this is me. This is my significator and I am in love with her. Um, I always, always look for the High Priestess first, at least. Uh, whenever I'm buying a deck, I always look for my significator, and if it resonates with me, that's what I do. That's what I, I mean, I buy it off of that. And yeah, so anyway, pros, I feel like this is going to be very easy to shuffle. I haven't shuffled it yet, as you can see, um, but... I do also enjoy that it's, okay, so I also enjoy that it's matte. Um, I like the, <clears throat> the fact that there is a glossy part as well. So there's a very good play on dimensions. And really, when you're talking about a deck of light, you want to have that dimension. As you can see, you want to see where the light literally will hit the cards. So it was very smart of Liz to do this, that even the backside is very much... Um, thought through, mindfully thought through for a deck of light. Had this been matte, you would not see the light shining through it, but it is a deck of light. It is the prism, tarot, the prism which contains all light, like white light that contains all kinds of colors, uh, all of the colors rather. So that's very nice. And it is reversible. As you can see, this matches this. You won't know, but this is already in reverse. So that's good. And I like the feel of it, <clears throat> sorry, in my hands. I like that it's very luxurious to the touch. It's heavy, it has weight, it seems very um, substantial. I think one con only is that, again, you don't have the title here. So for people who are starting out, you do need to familiarize yourself with the writer weight deck and know the different kinds of cards which are um well just know your major and minor arcanists you know just to kind of like um just to inform yourself of it but really actually when you're reading cards whether it's a major it's from the major arcana or the minor arcana it what really matters is what message is in that card so for me, it's kind of like, at this point, it's not that much of a problem, but if you're starting out, then you might 
want, yeah, you might want to familiarize yourself with that kind of stuff, with that, with the names. But overall, this is beautiful. Thank you so much to Liz Landis for creating this deck. I am in love with it. It is without a doubt beautiful. And thank you for these um, freebies as well. So, yeah. If you like this video, guys, please give it your thumbs up. If you have any comments, suggestions, you want to say hey, comment down below. If you would like to receive notifications of my new videos, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you would like your very own tarot reading or Reiki healing session with me, online for now, of course. Here are the details. And that's it. Stay happy, stay healthy. Do check this deck out if it resonated with you. And yeah, see you next time, guys. Bye.